got to get out of here. Hey, Tuttle, I got a date for you tonight. Dot's cousin just got into town, and you and I... I already have an engagement. I've had it for over a month with Cyrus J. Rutherford. Cyrus J. Rutherford, the screwball millionaire? Eccentric, you can't call a man with $8 million a screwball. I can. All that hocus pocus about the stars and building a private, uh, what do you call it, on top of his house? Observatory. He just happens to believe in the influence of the stars on human behavior. <laughs> the only stars that could influence my behavior would be Dorothy Lamar or Veronica Lake. Say, every big company in town's taking a shot at Rutherford. How'd you swing it? Leo. Leo? Leo who? The star. You see, I wrote and told her that I was born under the sign of Leo. That's his lucky star. And he wrote right back and made the appointment for the 13th, which is today, when Leo's in the ascendancy. You mean to say you believe in that guff, too? I believe in selling insurance. Tuttle, the way you keep that nose to the grindstone, you're going to wear out the grindstone. <laughs> you can laugh. Wait till I come back here with Mr. Rutherford's name on that policy. Quiet, please. I, Cyrus J. Rutherford, being of sound mind and body, do hereby declare the following to be the preamble to my last will and testament. <clears throat> the disposition of my estate is of only slightly less interest to me than it is to you, my loving heirs. It has been divided among you. The largest share is to be $500,000, and the smallest, $1.50 to pay for the taxi from the station. So pay close attention, all of you. My sister Estelle, who disobeyed my wishes 20 years ago by marrying a nincompoop, named, I believe, Kenneth, and whom I've had the pleasure of not seeing since. Cyrus never changed a bit. And niece Margaret, whom I have never seen, which is probably just as well. I like that. My nephew, James Davis. I last saw him when he was an impertinent youth of 20. I do not like impertinence, and I did not like James. My niece, Carol Dunlap. Although I despised her father, turned out to have somewhat better intelligence and a less selfish interest in her old uncle than others in the family. And the last of my living relatives, Nephew Henry Rutherford and his wife, Mona. Henry, at least, has the virtue of bearing the Rutherford name. And he was a fairly good investment counselor. Honest, as far as I could find out. Mona wears too much makeup. I told you he didn't. Oh, shut up. Go on, Mr. Gelman. And she seems to have waited with undue impatience for my demise. My faithful butler, Merkel, who for 20 years padded the household bills and Matthews, who kept house for me in a haphazard sort of way. Professor Hilton, to whom I owe my knowledge and understanding of the secrets of the heavens. And finally, my lawyer, Morton Gelman. Uh, <clears throat> uh, well, that's about all, folks. The rest is just routine. Go ahead and read it. We're all just one big happy family. Yes, let's hear it. We want to... Whom I trust implicitly as far as I can throw an elephant. As you know, I have been an ardent student of the stars. I want to continue to be exposed to them. Therefore, I wish to be interred not underground, but in a glass-domed vault where they will evermore continue to shine down upon me. You are all to remain here as my guests until this vault is completed. After I have been safely interred, you may open my will, which is now sealed in the safe in the specimen room. Then you will learn how I have seen fit to reward you, one and all. But should this, my last wish, be disobeyed, and my body buried anywhere except in the above-mentioned vault, then the terms of the will shall be reversed, and those who are to get the large bequests will get the smallest, and vice versa. Furthermore, should any of you leave the grounds before I am safely interred in my vault, you will forfeit all rights to your legacies. I know you will find it difficult to live together, even for a few days, but this is my wish. So with these last words, I leave you to your squabbling, which, fortunately, 
I won't be able to hear. Oh, oh insulting and strange ideas. Yeah, it'll never hold up in a court of law. Please, no, please. It's all perfectly legal. They'll start work on the vault tomorrow. Should only be a matter of a few days. Looks as if you and I are in for the lion's share. You mean from what Uncle Cyrus said? <clears throat> this place gives me the creepy mimi. I wish it were over with. You don't have to stay. Have you read the final will? Do you know who gets what? He drew it up himself. And nobody will read the will until he is properly interred. Well, if yeah, I'd known, I'd yeah. not stand around in the presence of Uncle Cyrus's body and crawl about his will. I wouldn't crawl either if I'd spent 20 years stooging for a slice of it. I resent that. I meant you to, dear cousin. like some coffee. Uh, very well. You'll serve it in the library, Matthews. Am I taking orders from you now? You are. Do, as Mrs. Rutherford would say, Matthews, until the actual bill is read. What do you mean by that? Exactly nothing, madam. Nothing at all. Excuse me, I'll straighten the room. At the detective agency? I have a job for you. What? You want to hire a man to guard a stiff? Yes, I want you to see that he isn't buried. Hey, look, is this a gag? His body must not be disturbed. That's right. You want the job or don't? We'll keep your friend on ice. Just pay my man the first hundred dollars when he gets there. All right. I'll be straight to you in about an hour. Ooh. Uh, can I play too? I beg your pardon. Oh, that's all right. I was just going to have a quiet six or eight drinks if you will tell me which is to be my room. Well, I could even show you, unless you'd rather drink alone. Mrs. Rutherford. Mona! Well, well, what have we here? Oh, come on, Kenneth. I've got a headache. Does anyone see Professor Hilton? He's up in the tower, I imagine, communing with the stars. Well, just to set everyone's mind at rest, I've engaged a watchman to spend the night with the casket. That's a swell idea. It'll save us the trouble of watching each other all night. Merkel. There are too many rats in this house. They should be done away with. You haven't put out enough cups. Mr. and Mrs. Rutherford, are they to have it too? All of them. Will you open the door, please? but I can't find anyone in the library. Well, they're probably all retired. Wouldn't you care for some, sir? No, it keeps me awake. I assure you, this coffee will not keep you awake. No, thank you. No, thank you, Merkel. Very well, sir. Come in. I thought 
you might need your bag, Miss Carroll. You left it in the hall closet downstairs. Oh, yes, thank you. Just put it there. Yes, ma'am. That was very considerate of you. Not at all. I hope you'll be comfortable. I'm sure I will. Good night. Good night. house at once if you value your life. That must be the detective driving up. Thank goodness for that. you have here? Yes, sir. Oh, I've been trying to get here for so long. I tell him you're here, sir. Thank you. Go! You're not wanted here. Hmm? Go! Glad you've come. Say, that... I wouldn't have slept in wink all night if you hadn't. Well, thanks. That's awfully kind now, of you. You don't look a bit like I expected. I don't? No. I thought you'd be more rugged looking. You know that way. Why do I have to look rugged? Well, I don't mean that you aren't. I, I just mean that you don't look it. Oh. I suppose under your coat you're a mass of muscle. <laughs> just shows how deceptive appearances can be. Oh, I don't think my appearance is so deceptive. Now you're being modest. But then I've heard that people who lead dangerous lives usually are. Well, it, it isn't so dangerous, but uh, once in a while you run into a rough customer who tries to throw you out, but mostly it's just routine. Oh, I wouldn't call it routine to go tracking people down so they can shoot at you. Oh, no one's ever gone that far. Although one time a fellow tried to cancel his wife's life. Oh, how horrible. What did you do? I talked him out of it. Besides that, I got him to take out an annuity for her. <laughs> oh, you must be very brave. Oh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. How do you do? <laughs> I'm Morton Gelman, Mr. Rutherford's lawyer. Pleased to meet you. Your duties have been explained to you? Mr. Gelman, I've been in this business for over 12 years. Good, then you should know what to do. Here's your money. Oh, I couldn't take any money yet, really. This is just the first payment. You'll get the rest later if everything goes off satisfactorily. Well, I'm quite sure it will. Of course, uh, he has to be examined by the doctor. Well, that's all been taken care of. You just do your part. We'll take care of the rest. Here you are. Well, this is a little bit irregular, but I guess it'll be all right. He's in there. You'll just sit with him all night. I'll sit with him. I'll right. be upstairs if you should want me. May I show you in, sir? Well, I guess so, yes. Uh, goodbye, Miss... Dunlap. Pleased to have met. Met. We haven't met yet. My name is Tuttle, Albert Tuttle. I'm Carol Dunlap. His niece. How do you do? How do you do? Would you care to have a cup of coffee first, sir? Yes, I would. What kind of coffee is this? The very best, sir. No, I mean there are two classes of coffee drinkers. There's the percolated, then there's the drip. This is percolated. Sorry, I'm a drip. <laughs> well, excuse me. Yes. Good luck, Mr. Tuttle. Don't worry, Mr. Rutherford won't get away from me tonight. This way, sir. How's Mr. Rutherford looking these days? He never looks better, sir. Fine. He's in there. Thank 
evening, Mr. Rutherford. Oh, there you are. Mr. Rutherford, I'm Albert L. Tuttle of the Emperor. Insurance? What are you talking about? He's in there right in the corner. I just put my briefcase right on his face. What's going on here? What's the disturbance? They don't seem to understand. Mr. Rutherford, he's in there. Deceased, dead. What do you think he was, dozing? You mean you knew it all the time? Why else would I hire you to watch the body? Watch it. I came here to sell it. Him. Uh, life insurance. Who ever heard of selling a dead man life insurance? I don't want to sell him now. <laughs> Say, who are you anyway? Albert Sutton of the Emperor Life Insurance. I had an appointment, Mr. Rutherford. I've had it for over a month. I was going to sell him a $200,000 policy and get my gold pin. Why didn't you say so? What are you doing going around posing as a detective? I wasn't posing as anybody. I came here to see Mr. Rutherford and I've seen him. And I'm going to get out of here. Not with my $100. I don't want your money. I didn't want it in the first place. Here. Hat and coat, I don't sir. want my hat and coat. I just... Oh, excuse me. I hope whatever you're worried about turns out all right when the real detective gets here. Maybe he isn't coming. Maybe they just said that. I wouldn't put it past them. I don't quite follow you. I'm afraid to talk here. Oh. Excuse me. Worried about staying here, I'd be very happy to drive into town. I have to. I feel quite sure everything will turn out all right. I know something's going to happen. I wish you'd stay. What could happen with all those nice people here? Well, goodbye. Look out! Get away from here before you get yourself killed. Wait a minute, pal. Wait a minute. You're going to pass up a bit like that. Pipe that dog. You could be a hero. Go now while you've got both legs. This is none of your business. Don't listen to that side of you. Get in there and pitch. Look at those eyes. Look at those... Stop it. Stop it. She's luring you to destruction. She'll try flattering next. She'll say, you saved my life. You're wonderful. Oh, you saved my life. You're wonderful. What did I tell you? Eh. Uh, oh. You're hurt. Nah, it was just a bump. You all right? Yeah. Oh. Well, goodbye. Oh, please don't go. Oh, it was just an accident. No, it wasn't. Someone tried to kill me. I know it. They said they would, and they'll try it again. Here, will you read this? Somebody put it in my bag. Leave this house at once uh, if you value your life. Well, goodbye. Hey, that's really on the level. Somebody tried to... Whose room is up there? Well, that's the tower, I think. The tower, eh? Somebody tried to kill you, eh? Well, I'll show him he can't go around throwing rocks on people. I'll go up there and I'll get them in my hands and I'll I'll tear them apart. Now, please don't. You might get hurt. It's a good thing you talked me out of it. Then you'll help me. Well, uh... Please. Well, uh... Well, uh... Well, uh...
Mr. Tuttle, Professor Hilton. You mind if we look around, Professor? And I'm busy. Constellations changing. Venus approaching Jupiter. It must be very interesting for Jupiter. Go right ahead. We won't get in your way. Uh, careful. You might get a, a long way down. How did that stone get loose? Stone? Stone? Oh, yes, stone. Thought I heard. Uh, afraid to look. Heights make me um, uh, vertigo, uh, dizzy. It's funny for an astrologer. Up, yes. Look up, I like that. Down, no. It goes to my uh, 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 dizzy. Professor, I was almost killed by that stone. You don't seem very interested. What will be, will be. It's all in the stars. May I look at your hand? Palms? Poppycock, bungum. Don't believe in reading palms. Depends on what you see there. There's dirt on yours. How did it get there? Uh, uh, my pencil. Roll underneath the telescope. Uh, dusty under there. Very dusty. Mm. Well, uh, excuse us. Thank you. He looked harmless enough, but there was dirt on his hand. Well, maybe someone came around the parapet when he wasn't looking and loosened the stone. Why should anyone want to harm you? I don't know. Uncle Cyrus left kind of a peculiar will. Hasn't been read yet. But if I'm one of the ones that gets a bigger share, somebody wants to get me out of the way. Could have been an accident. Accident? Say, are you covered for falling stone? I don't think so. Well, if one stone fell, another could work loose. That would be a good thing to be covered. Let's see now. Oh, the detective. I wonder why he didn't show up. Hmm? Atlas Detective Agency. Canal 60598. They don't answer. Maybe they're on a special case, something like murder or something. What are you doing here? I thought you'd left. Well, you see... You wanted a... someone to watch the body. The detective didn't show up, so Mr. Tuttle said he'd do it. I did? Him? He? What? He, not him. It's a common mistake. You see, him is objective. I'm and... sure your grammar is excellent, Mr. Tuttle, but I'm afraid you won't make a very good watchman. I'm afraid so, too. Well, he's better than no watchman at all, isn't he? Besides, I think he's very nice to say he'd do so. Who? 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 Are... Very well. I wash my hands of the whole responsibility. From now on, it's on your own head. On my head? Now, Mr. Gellman, I'm a mistake here. It's very kind of you. I'll be able to sleep now. Good night, Albert. Good night, Carol. Good night, Mr. Gellman. Good night. I guess it'll be all right. I'll uh, sit here and make myself comfortable. In there. In there? I don't need anybody to watch out here. Uh, but, uh, oh, Mr. Gellman, uh, would you like to play a little dominoes? No. Set a game? No.
large, gloomy house was dark, except for the light by which McGarity was reading. Outside, a storm was brewing. Inside, the painful silence held a promise of violence and death. In the distance, the first faint rumble of approaching thunder was heard. The very emptiness of the room held menace. To Inspector McGarity's alert ears, no sound was too slight to be heard. The ticking of the clock, almost in rhythm with the beating of his own heart. The wind slammed a shutter against a window. McGarity knew that the hour was at hand. Quietly, a secret panel opened in the wall behind him. Two hands with fingers curved like the claws of a predatory animal reached toward its throat. Feeling vaguely that something was amiss, McGarity glanced around. The hands withdrew. When they reappeared, they held a handkerchief to jam down his throat and snuff the breath from his lungs before he could cry out. The hair in the back of McGarity's neck began to rise. He had a premonition that the bloody hand which had struck down Sir Ogilvy would strike again that night. Garrity's premonition was well founded. For at that very moment, the murderer looking behind him was preparing to kill the famous detective in cold blood. Ah, trash. Things like that don't happen. Beneficiary. Oh. Oh, Carol. What happened? There's blood on your hand. You're hurt. Oh, it's your blood. Oh, my blood. My blood? Oh, Albert. I'm wounded. He killed me. Oh, control yourself. It's only a scratch. You should have such a scratch. Never mind that. What happened? Oh, I don't know. The lights went out and somebody hit me. Then the lights went out. There it is. What is it? My blood. That's what I was hit with. Both doors are locked from the inside. It's someone right here in this house. Where were you five minutes ago? Oh, don't be so nosy. I was with them. Why? What's the matter? You got a headache? Maybe you can tell us what's the matter. Someone attacked him. It's my blood. We were upstairs having a nightcap. Kenneth Hopkins, you promised you'd only have one drink. It's cold up there in bed. Who's this? Mr. Tuttle was acting as watchman to be sure that no one steals the... He's gone. What? Uh, well, maybe he went out for a little walk. This is no joking matter. How did this happen? Do you realize what this means if he's buried underground? I thought you were getting a watchman. Somebody knocked him out. An 
and I thought you were an insurance salesman. Well, I am. I mean, uh, I was. You see, I just stayed to help out. There's something fishy about you. First you come here with a story we can't check. And you worm yourself in as a watchman. Henry, if you're insinuating that Albert had anything to do with it, well, I asked him to stay. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Albert. Suppose you lay off the third degree with Carol. Somebody stole Uncle Cyrus's body, and I'm going to find out who before it's too late. But why would anyone want to steal the body? Because of my client's will. He wanted to be interred in a glass-top vault so the stars would shine down on him. He didn't want to be buried any other way. If he is, then his bequests will be reversed. Those who want to get the larger share will get the smaller and vice versa. Oh, I see. Then somebody sold the body so that they could bury it and reverse the will. But then that would mean that they knew it was in the will. And nobody does, do they? I wonder. Cut out the wise cracks or I'll let you have it. Oh, I think you're taking a lot for granted, Henry. No one has read the will. The body must still be here in the house and we've got to find it. I beg pardon. With everybody's nerves, Alan Edge. I suggest that you all have some coffee. No, no. no. Oh, yes, Merkel, I'll have some. Thank you. No, I like drip. Well, maybe Uncle wasn't stolen. Maybe he's hiding. I can see why he didn't like you. And I'll tell you right now what I think. What? That you and Kenneth, who undoubtedly are down for the smallest share, have stolen it. Why, you two-bit heel. I've been wanting to do this for 20 years. Oh, Albert. Oh, no, I hit the jackpot. Uncle Simon, Take it away, somebody. Take it away. Oh. Listen, Tuttle. I've got an idea how we can catch the body snatcher. If it works. Get someone else. My head is killing me. You're the only one who can do it. Now, listen. Please, just let me lie here quietly and bleed. All you've got to do is to pretend you're fed up. You're scared. Pretend I'm scared. What do you think I'm shaking from, enthusiasm? You quit. Then, when the coast is apparently clear, whoever it was might come back and try again. Then you catch them. We catch them. We? By that time, I'll be in my bed. Oh, no. You only pretend to leave. Then you sneak in through the French windows and you lay for them. Listen, I'm not covered for going in through windows. I mean, in case of glass breakage. There's nothing to it. I'll be right here waiting for you, and you'll be waiting in the coffin. Oh, I'll be... Coffin? Don't you think it'll be a little bit crowded in there? We'll hide the real body. Oh. I get a better idea. Let the body stay there and let me hide. Look, you want to help, don't you, for Miss Dunlap's sake? Well, I didn't figure on going that far. Good. Now, you start your act as soon as we get out in the hall. Now, well, wait a minute. I want to talk to Miss Dunlap first. I don't want her to think I'm a coward, even if I am. Absolutely not. You mustn't tell anyone. If anything went wrong, she'd be open to suspicion. Oh, I didn't think... If anything went wrong, nothing will go wrong. Why don't you stop worrying? You sure this is all right? Yeah. Remember now, you pretend you're leaving. Then I'll let you in again through the French windows. But make it convincing. I can't stand much more. A body falling on Albert. Ooh. I've had enough of this. I'm going home. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. Albert. That is the way I feel about it. I am going home. I don't care what you say, Mr. Gelman. I'm leaving. After all, I've been popped in the head and punched around and pushed around. Albert. Why should I stay? Next time, I might get killed. And I'm too young to get killed. That's a very sensible attitude. A very sensible attitude, Mr. Tuttle. After all, it's not my affair. You said so yourself, Carol. I came here to sell your Uncle Cyrus insurance. As long as nobody's interested in insurance, I'm leaving. Eh? Well, goodbye, Carol. Goodbye, Albert. Oh, well, uh... I... I don't blame you for going, but... Well, maybe we'll meet again sometime in town. Maybe. And if we do, there'll be something I want to say. What? Goodbye. Try it again. 
too risky. Well, we got rid of that screwball, didn't we? There's nothing to stop us now. Do you think we're doing the right thing? Suppose we get rid of the body and find out we reversed the will in somebody else's favor. Yes. What about that? Don't be asinine. Uncle Cyrus didn't like any of us well enough to leave us a pig's bristle. I'm for taking my chances on reversing the will and getting a good share. All right, I'm with you there. But what was the goofy idea of moving the body? I thought he was plenty comfortable in the cellar. So we put him first. Are you serious? I thought you and your pop put him behind the living room panel. We thought you did. Hey, wait a minute. Either you two are giving me a runaround or somebody else is playing put and take. I wonder who. Well, stop wondering. This time we'll stash Uncle Cyrus' body where nobody will ever find it. Get your coats. What for? We're going to take a little hike. But I... And stop nursing that bottle. Come on, Dad. Come on, hurry it up with you. Think we'll be safe in there? Of course. You'll be watching. Yeah, I'll be watching. Here, hide the key. Come on. Get your coat off and get in. Say, I have an idea. Suppose I hide in the specimen room with you. No, that's no good. Get in. It doesn't look comfortable. Why not? It's padded. Yeah, so is the cell. Come on, now, get in. Now, wait a minute. Don't rush me. Uh, you sure it's safe? I'm not worried about that. You're not worried. No need of both of us worrying. Come on. much time. Oh. Don't lock it. Of course not. Mr. Gelman. What is it now? Could you get me a glass of water? <laughs> I got hiccups. <laughs> Hold your breath. That'll cure you. That's what I'm afraid of.
make me drop it? If anybody jerked, you jerked. Oh, for heaven's sake, stop it. Come on, let's get this thing over with. There, that did it. You almost jerked it out of my hands that time. I did no such a thing. Your foot must have slipped. Look, do I have to carry this thing myself? Come on, I'm freezing. Talk me into this. Wait a minute, there's something here. What's a goldfish? Where do I get my hands on that? That lawyer? You mean you think the goldfish... Perfectly is... safe, he said. Nothing could happen to me. Why, it's as simple as a straight life insurance policy. You know what? Oh, what's that, my father? Oh. 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 <laughs> what? Gelman. Sure, it was Gelman. He knew I wouldn't leave you here all alone, so he cooked up that scheme just to get me out of the way. Even made me get in that coffin. Then after he and his accomplices had gotten me out of the way, he thought he'd have a clear field. But let me tell you... Uh-oh. What are you doing? I want to see if they had time to steal the body while I was drowning. You mean the body's in there? Yeah, it's still it. Ow! It's Calvin. Rutherford's gone and he's in there dead. Mother! Well, I don't think he... He'd exactly hang himself on a coat hook to commit suicide. Or would he? Oh, oh don't leave me. Hello. Hello. Mr. Gilman. Dead. This is dead, too. There, there, there. Now, now, don't get scared. Oh, but I am scared, Albert. Aren't you? Who, me? I've been scared since 8.30. What are we going to do? There's a murderer in this house. Three of them. Any one of us might be next. Not if we catch them first. How? I'll show them. I'm through being pushed around. I've been bopped, clopped, and clunked. I'll show them that they can't drown Albert Tuttle and get away with it. I'll call them all down here, and, and we'll grill them. Grill. That reminds me. I'm hungry. Me too. I think we ought to... We ought to fry this and eat it. Oh, Albert... What about the murderers? Let them catch their own fish. I made a joke. Yes. Poor Mr. Gilman. Why would anyone want to kill him? Never mind that. Then what? Well, then we came back here and we went to the closet. And there he was. Dead. What about my uncle? Where is he? 
We'd better find a body before it's buried. How can you be so cold-blooded? A man's been murdered, and all you can think about is your inheritance. Whoever stole the body was thinking about it, too. That same person murdered Gelman. There were three of them. I saw them. You saw them? Why didn't you say so? Who were they? It was dark. I couldn't tell. You couldn't tell? Mirko. Yes, sir? Do you always sleep fully clothed? Uh, no, sir. Then what are you doing dressed at this hour of the night? I was waiting for the next occurrence. Oh, then you knew something was going to happen. Well, didn't it? Having already been aroused once before, I thought it would save time if I remained in my room and call. Is that how the mud got on your shoes? Waiting in the room? I stepped out to let the cat in out of the rain. What rain? What rain? Falling down, sir. What is the trouble? I heard the commotion. Where were you, Professor? Watching Venus until the rain. Mr. Gelman has been murdered. Well, you're not surprised. Surprised? No. Not even at murder? No such a thing. Foreordained. Mr. Gelman in the shadow. An unlucky star. Very unlucky. Well, if the stars can tell you all that, perhaps they can also tell you who killed him. No. I am a scientist, Mr. Turtle. It's Tuttle. Not a detective. I can tell you this, though. Do not make too many plans for a birthday party yourself. You are under the influence of a very precarious star. Very precarious, Mr. Tittle. It's Tuttle. My car is outside. I'm going to the police. You'll never get there. Why not? I'm begging your pardon, sir. The bridge over the creek was washed out. I saw it from the tower. No one can get in or out. Then I'll walk. Suit yourself, sir. But the nearest telephone would be about ten miles in the rain. Why do we waste time answering a lot of questions? We'd better start looking for Uncle's body. You look for him. I'm going up to lock myself in my room till the police come. Come along, Kenneth. Me too. I didn't come here to spend all night on a treasure hunt. Aren't you going to give us a clue? While we're on the subject, where were you when all this went on? I was in bed. Is that right? I suppose so. You suppose so? We have separate rooms. Well, naturally. I'm going to help them look. After all, I started... You should get out of those wet clothes before you catch your death. Oh, stop using that word. I'm all right. <coughs> There's a vacant room next to mine. It was Uncle Cyrus's. You're going to use it. Come on. Of course. Would you like some coffee, Mr. Turtle? It's Tittle. A Tuttle. No, thank you. Madam? I don't need anything to keep me awake. None for me, thanks. No. If you find anything, call me. I'll be in my room. That'll be a novelty. on me, are you? Oh, don't be silly. We were all together. Except when you went for your coats. Stop it. Somebody else wants the will changed even more than we do. Enough to commit murder.
the matter? What is it? Oh, Where? Where? Right here on the bed beside me. He's trying to choke me. Go back to sleep. You had a nightmare. Oh, I did. I tell you, he was here. He was right there beside me. Wait till I finish brushing my teeth. I'll find Jim. Get your drink. I'll finish. Oh, Kenneth, please. It was here, I tell you. What? I 
think I've had enough. Good night. give you until the count of three to come out. One, two, three. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Oh, Carol, I can explain everything. It's uh, <laughs> embarrassing, isn't it? What are you doing here? Well, I heard footsteps. They sound as if they came from up here. I heard them, too. I'd have sworn they came from right over my head. Well, I guess there's nobody else here. Must have been the wind. we better go back before someone else hears us and start shooting. Yes, we'd better. Now, if you get frightened, I'm right across there. You call me. That's a big help. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good evening. Did you sell any insurance? Now listen, Carol. Done that to you. No matter what you're thinking, I'm innocent. I was just taking her back to her room. Then I was going to my room. Oh, you've had a busy night. You mean when I get into Margaret's room? That wasn't my fault either. Why, you Casanova. Oh, you got me all wrong. I get into her room to her mother's room. I was lost. Well, if you don't believe me, perhaps you'll believe Mrs. Rutherford. Mrs. Rutherford! You don't have to explain. I only know what I see. She doesn't answer. Mrs. Rutherford! I just left. 
I'd better go in. I'll show you. Is she awake? Ah! Ah! What's all the racket? Pounding on walls? Squeak? Oh. How did this happen? I don't know. I was with her a few minutes ago. Mona. Mona. I'll kill you for this. Hey, go, I'll kill you. I know it. Wait, wait. wait a minute. I don't know what this is all about. You don't think I had anything to do with it. That's absurd. I just took her back to her room and I didn't even go in. That's Carol. She saw me come out. I, I mean, uh, I thought you said you didn't go inside. I didn't. I just, I just looked around to make sure that there was nobody there. Then you were inside. Oh, that doesn't prove anything. Suppose he was inside. Then he was the last person to see her alive. He just admitted it. I didn't. Anybody could have gotten in here. How? Through the panel. There's a spring here. You just touch it and this, this panel opens. There's a secret passage in back of it. It's there someplace. Save that for the police. Only the next time you better make it better. Police? I came here to tell insurance. Brother, you better have some. Oh, Jim, what right have we got to judge? Look, Carol, a murder's been committed. Two murders. By his own admission, he was the last person to see both murdered people alive. Then he pulls this phony story about a secret panel, only there's no panel. And Uncle Cyrus' body is still missing. I'll bet he stole it. I didn't have anything to do with it. I came here to sell insurance. Why should I go around killing people? Well, that's something else for the police to find out. Let's lock him up before he has the chance to kill somebody else. Now, wait a minute. You. Wait a minute. I'm innocent. You can't do this to me. I tell you, I'm innocent. Put it in the tower, Michael. Yes, sir. What are you going to do to me? They're locking you in here. Here, here's the key. I wish you'd listen to me. The real murderer is still at large. Sure, we'll listen to you when the police get here. Are you sure this is the only way out? No, don't the other way. Straight down. Good. Shall I take him out, sir, and push him off the ledge? You could say it was an accident. No, Michael, we'll let the law take its course if he's quiet. Of course, if he tries to escape, well, that's a different matter. How's Henry? Pretty broken up. I'll see what I can do for him. Perhaps you would like some coffee, sir. Oh. Jim, about Albert. Sorry, Carol. I'm afraid he's just a wrong guy. Police. I'm not so sure. It's just my word against the evidence. Even the stars are against me. The professor said so. Now, don't get feeling like that. Everything will turn out all right somehow. Stars are no stars. Look, it's clearing up already. Maybe that's a good sign. I wonder which one is mine. You know, the uh, precarious one. <laughs> don't tell me you're falling for that hooey. You can't tell. There may be something to it after all. How can those little pinpoints influence your life? You can't even tell them apart. Not even through this thing, I'll bet you. Probably had plain old-fashioned window glass in it. Oh! What's the matter? Something in your eye? Look at it. Look at it. It's nothing. Something wrong? My telescope? Little key. Remarkable. Very remarkable. I've never seen the moon's face so clear. The stuff. Get him out! Get him out! He'll ruin my lens! 
What kind of a joke is that? This is not a toy. Get him out. Henry. Henry. What was that? How did I care? Where did it come from? Down there. me on the doll. Well, then, who bought me? What's the murderer? He's still loose. Down there. Hurry, he's got the girl. Come on, Paul. Hey, what about me? Mr. Gelman and Mona. 
That's right. Uncle Cyrus underrated me. <laughs> a satisfactory will. Go on, Jim. That's all there was to it. Henry had read the will, knew he wasn't going to get much money, so he tried to reverse it. Gelman caught him reading it, so Henry killed him. Well, now that the old boy's resting peacefully in his vault, we're all set for life. Let's have a drink on it. Would anyone like a cup of coffee? No, no coffee for me. Not for me, thanks. I'm going to have something stronger. Well, Carol, I... Carol, I guess my work is over here. I guess it's goodbye. I hope not, Albert. Maybe sometime, someplace. Go on in, pal. She's waiting for you. Wait. You go in there, you'll never get out. You'll be hooked for life. Brother. Who cares? Such fine coffee. Business. Oh, 